And the winner of the M2 Air is... Apple's new M2 laptops have a superpower that nobody is talking about and I'm using it right now. Well, today we are gonna show you exactly how that is, how I came across wanting to test it, what it does and how it absolutely blew my mind. Now with that, we are gonna be choosing the winner of our M2 MacBook Air giveaway in this video in real time, live on screen. So make sure you guys stick around and you guys see if you are the one who won. It all started out when I started testing the M2 MacBook Air about a week ago. The biggest question that people had was how bad does the fanless M2 Air thermal throttle compare to the M2 Pro that does have a fan? Right out of the gate, we started noticing temperatures like 104, 107, and even 108 degrees shortly after we started our very first run of Cinebench. Even then, our first run was quite impressive compared to the M2 MacBook Pro, just because the temps stayed high and the frequency stayed high, just dropping a tiny bit, resulting in pretty good performance. But then we decided to do a longer run and take a look at the CPU wattage and frequencies as the test continued. And what really surprised me was how much the wattage dropped after the temps started to get way too hot for too long and then dropping down a bit to control uh, the heat. Now that is normal, but what wasn't normal or what was very interesting was the scores that we were getting. Our first run was using over 20 watts to achieve that great score, but then we dropped down to 10 watts and the performance didn't drop that much, all while using half the power or even less than that and having much lower temperatures. Now, if you remember our M1 versus M2 MacBook Pro comparison, we found that the M2 chip uses 33% more power to gain only 13% more performance. So we ended up calling it the M1.5 instead of the M2 because it uses a lot more power to gain a little bit more frequency to give us a little bit more power while having a lot more heat and more power usage, which is exactly what happens when you overclock a system. And because of that and its single fan, if you push it hard, like we did when we compared it to the 14 inch MacBook Pro, it can absolutely thermal throttle, reach those high temperatures, and then shut the power down to the CPU and the GPU in order to cool itself down and then ramp up once again with those crazy power usages and temps in order to keep rolling unlike the M2 MacBook Air, which doesn't have a fan, and they end up clocking it down. So those performance cores are essentially the same, but overclocked, but what isn't the same with the M2 chip are the efficiency cores, and nobody is really focusing on them. They are brand new, they are larger, they are more powerful, and they are more efficient. So after seeing that Cinebench run at 10 watts, I went into the settings and I noticed something that I had to test out. And this is where the superpower comes in. I needed to check the optimized battery charging because we needed to charge up quickly to do a battery test and I noticed the low power mode. Now this isn't brand new, it's been out for a little while, but nobody really focused on it because with the M1 chips and the O1 Pros and Max, they had very little efficiency cores, they were weak but the efficiency cores in the system are much more powerful, so I had to test it out, and my mind was blown. Now, before I show you the real world results, that did way better than I expected, let me get Vadim into here so we can give away the M2 MacBook Air. Hey guys, Vadim here, and we are so close to a million subscribers, only around 2,000 away, so if you haven't subscribed, click the button down below right now. Yes, please, even if you didn't uh, do the giveaway, you didn't care about it, help us out if you watch our content. And now, let's give away this mm -hmm. brand new Starlight M2 MacBook Air. We did not want anybody to deal with the SSD nope. issues, so we bought one that has 512 gigs of storage, mm -hmm. so you are gonna be set. 
Now, let me explain how we're doing this. We did nine videos with this launch week and we have them in a playlist right here, one through nine, and I'm gonna choose one of them as the video that we're gonna use for the giveaway, so let's do that right now. It is gonna be oh, the first video, number once again. One. Number that one, that's excellent. That's the teardown, I think it has the most comments, so we're gonna be choosing a random comment from here. So what I'll do is I'll grab the URL and I'll paste it into youtubecommentpicker.com. I'm gonna filter the duplicate users and let's get those comments. And it looks like we have almost 19,000 unique wow. comments, so it's gonna choose out of that and let's go ahead and start the raffle. Let's see who it is. All right, moment of truth. We're rolling. Oh, yeah. Ardanin uh, Aryan <laughs> Canelli. Comment says, thanks for the video and the giveaway. Do you think he's that young? I was gonna try yeah, to read the name again too. Oh, dude, imagine like Arden. a 10 year old. I hope it's a, it's a 10 year old That's and he's so gonna cool. get uh, the MacBook <laughs> Air. So let's check the link here. He's got a thousand subscribers mm -hmm. on here doing various videos, some tech stuff. Uh, looks like he's in Turkey. Turkey. His channel's been around for a while, so it's not some sc scammer or spammer yeah. that's posting. Let's subscribe to him. We are super excited to get you your M2 MacBook Congrats. Air. Congratulations. Thank you to all the viewers and supporters. Now, if we for some reason can't get a hold of him, uh, then we will basically just redo the raffle redo one more time in a future video. So thank you guys and let's get back into it. All right, and now let me show you what the M2 chip could do in that low power mode, both in terms of benchmarks and real world productivity performance compared to itself and Windows laptops, along with the power usage, the temperatures, which are shocking, and battery life. Starting out with a simple Geekbench 5 test, you can see that it uses about 24 watts when it is running for the multi-core test. Now, when I enabled the low power mode, we had a peak of 7.5 watts compared to almost 24 watts. And the average CPU was at about three and a half watts compared to 9.3. That is about three times less power usage. So what are the results? Does the system get three times slower? Well, you probably guessed it yourself, it doesn't. We got a single core score of 1,276. So yes, that is dramatically slower, but let me show you the real world productivity results here in a sec and a multi-core score of 6,273. So that is about 40% less performance, but it uses three times less power, which is insane. What makes this even crazier is that in yesterday's video, where we tested out the Dell XPS 13, which uses Intel's 12th generation Alder Lake system, which is more efficient, has efficiency cores, that thing got 1,182 for single core on battery power, so slower than the M2 chip with that low power mode that uses way less power. This is both with background stuff running and apps and all that. So it is slow and as far as multi-core, it got 5,476 and that is using over 20 watts of power on a battery without it being plugged in compared to 7.5 watts on the MacBook. So the MacBook beats it out while using three to five times less power throughout this test and that shows the true performance and efficiency of Apple Silicon compared to even Intel's 12th gen processors. Now in that video, we also compared the battery life of the XPS compared to the MacBook. They both started at 60% and after we did a few hours of running it, testing speakers, some performance tests, the Dell died on us. And at that same time, the MacBook had 40% battery left over, so only drained 20% compared to 60. Now we have the OLED model of the Dell, so that does suck more power, but the battery drain was just crazy when it was in its best performance mode. Switching it to the power saving mode 
does help a bit, but it makes the system way slower with a web browsing speed of 133, which is insanely slow. And we switch it to performance, it actually goes up to about 209. So you get almost half the performance. Now the M2 MacBook Air in that low power mode ends up getting 222 in its low power mode, beating out the Dell i7 Alder Lake in its best performance mode. So how is it doing this and what about real world productivity tasks? Well, when you enable it, it uses all four of the efficiency cores full blast and then it uses a tiny bit of performance cores to give it a little bit of an extra boost and it clocks those down to two gigahertz from the 3.5 gigahertz standard setting, which uses way less power and it's a lot more efficient. Now in Lightroom Classic, when I was working with the photos, it did a killer job, it was amazing. And then when I exported, it only used about two watts of power for the CPU, and then about one watt or so or even less for the GPU, which sounds insane. That's so low, and that's true. Normally the CPU is using about 18 watts and the graphics about three and a half with much higher peaks than that, which result in temperatures that reach 108 degrees Celsius. Using the low power mode, our hottest core reached only 51 degrees Celsius. The system stayed insanely cool. Now, what are the results of this export? I mean, you would think, man, we're using so little power. The thing is super cool. You don't even notice it. Uh, it's gonna, you know, sit battery. It must be extremely slow, right? <laughs> well, that took three minutes and 25 seconds to export these 50 images, whereas the Dell took three minutes and 42 seconds when it is running on battery, and that is using closer to 10 times more power, which blows my mind. Now, if you turn off the low power mode and it gets super hot, uh, uses a lot more battery, it will do this task much faster on the M2 MacBook Air. So I think it might not be worth using it when you're exporting, but of course you could just disable that when you're exporting for that short burst and then enable it again if you're just going through photos because even in low power mode, the performance is more than enough. And this leads me to real world battery life, which is a perfect timing because Dave Lee just released his video covering the competition for the M2 MacBook Air. And in that video, he included the XPS 13 plus with the base 1080p or so display that sips power and when it came time to talk about battery life this chart blew my mind once again we have the m2 macbook air that lasts about 11 hours and 15 minutes for light use and then four hours and 16 minutes for heavy use now personally i like to do the mixed use charts which you guys have seen before but when you look at the dell it scores 10 hours, 16 minutes for light use, and that is probably in the power savings mode that it wants to run, but only an hour and 48 minutes for heavy use. And this is the model that has the weaker CPU and that has the 1080p screen. So our hands-on video where the Dell died so quickly, that was true, that is honest, and it's terrible performance too when you have it unplugged like that. So the M2 MacBook Air absolutely destroys those laptops with way weaker processors and worse screens in battery life while being way better in every way. But then when you enable the low power mode and it's using three times less power, you can get closer to that 10 hours of use while you're doing things like video editing, photo editing, and other productivity tasks. And then even for the light use, it caps the frequencies, you can get closer to 14, 15 hours of use. Now you might say, well, that is already great what it offers out of the box. And that is absolutely true. But if you're somebody that doesn't want your system to heat up really hot, you wanna cap that, 
it's gonna run insanely cool. And then if you grab your MacBook and say it has 20% battery life, and maybe you don't have a charger with you or you can't plug in somewhere, you can enable that and still get better performance than the Windows competition while having insanely great battery life and it's just gonna last a very long time. And that wasn't available even with the M1 series of chips, but with four really powerful new efficiency cores in the system, it makes it absolutely amazing. And this isn't only for simple tasks. I also edited 4K video with effects added. And normally when we're exporting this, we're using about 1.2 watts with a higher peak of about seven and a half, and then about five watts for the graphics, which is already very low because of Apple's media engine. But in low power mode, we were using half a watt of the CPU and about 1.2 of the GPU, which is insane. And as far as the export times, it took four minutes and 20 seconds to export this. So still faster than real time of five minutes compared to about two minutes and 20 seconds when it's using way more power. So it uses five times less power and it doesn't even take twice as long to do that, which is crazy. Now, what's even crazier is that the Dell XPS on battery in its best performance mode, taking, I don't know, 10 times more power, that takes almost eight minutes in DaVinci Resolve to do the same task. And with that, while I would probably say, you know what, put into regular performance mode when you're exporting, have it be faster and then maybe put it back. Uh, when you're actually editing the timeline, it can handle this playing back perfectly while only using an average of 0.18 watts on the CPU and an average of 1.1 watt on the GPU. So you can edit full 4K video with some effects, granted lighter ones, nothing crazy, on low power mode and get insane levels of battery life. Now, if you're somebody that really pushes the graphics, I tested out Geekbench and Blender. And in Geekbench, we normally score about 26,400. And we have a peak of 11.2 watts with an average of about 3.42. This tests a lot of different tasks, a lot of which don't max out the GPU. It's running really efficiently. And when we enabled the low power mode, our peak was 7.74 with an average of under two watts. So over 70% less power being used and the score barely dropped to 22,148. That is only 19% less graphics performance while using 72% less power on average which is insane. Now Blender already uses barely any power, just under five watts. I think they have a lot more software optimization to do. These systems could get a lot faster, but switching to low power mode, it used about 79% less power there. And in terms of rendering our BMW test with the GPU, it took two minutes and 45 seconds instead of two minutes and 15 seconds, almost two minutes and 16 seconds. So it took about 20% longer while using almost 80% less power. And with this whole render, it literally didn't even drop the battery percentage by 1%. So there you guys go, the true, Amazing champ, awesome part of the M2 chip are the efficiency cores, but it is a shame that Apple isn't really making the best use of them because in daily use, the battery ratings are very similar compared to before. And that is because when you do end up doing something, opening an application, something that could use a CPU, we reach those high frequencies that use a lot more power in order to get those gains that Apple advertised on stage. And truly we have those performance gains, but if they wanted to tone it down just a little bit, they would have gotten much better battery life than before. But of course they do need to kind of compete with their M1 chip. So the efficiency cores are amazing. And if you want your uh, MacBook Air, the M2 to run super cool, have insane battery life while still giving you better performance than a Windows laptop, go ahead and try this out for yourself. I think you'll be very surprised. Or at least if you find yourself in a situation where your battery is very low, you can't plug in, make sure to enable that because it will still run 
very well. There you guys go. If you guys enjoy videos like these, please click that subscribe button above. We would greatly appreciate it. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.